Hey guys, Ruby here with Unorthodox Aquatics and I'd like for you to come with me today and explore the little world of the Hog Choker. So I am uh, in my bedroom um, by a not very exciting looking aquarium I have behind me here. This is a 40 gallon tall and what I have in here uh, is a pair of hog choker. Now uh, let's, uh, let's first turn on the light maybe and let's take a closer look. Hold on. Okay, so here's the tank. Like I said, nothing exciting because, oh here's one. Here's one stuck to the side. Very cool, because you can see their kind of sideways digestive system there. Um, that is flat face uh, down toward us. So um, this is what they call a right-handed uh, flat fish. These hog chokers, because their eyes, um, they are on the right side of the body when you're looking at it from a bird's eye view. Let's see. Oh, the other one's back in the corner here. So, um, I'm going to grab a net or something to see if I can get some movement. Or here. Let's see. Such cool little fish. Gorgeous markings, um, kind of plain looking, camouflage, but brown um, with dark splotches. They've got kind of a serrated body on the side. You can see uh, the forks, and uh, you can even see the eyes on, the, t on uh, the top of the head too. Kind of funny looking little things. So uh, yeah, uh, in a nutshell, um, that's basically what uh, they are like appearance wise. Um, they spend much of the time covered up or um, hunting nocturnally, so... Contrary to popular belief, uh, these guys are not technically flounders. Um, they're more closely related to the soul, but uh, the hog choker is what they are. Uh, that name comes from... Um, uh, farmers would feed these to their hogs and they would uh, suction to the back of their throat and kind of make them choke. So, uh, interesting little factoid tid tidbit there about the hog choker. Um, now these, uh, actually, these ones were raised, um, in a freshwater, fully freshwater environment, I found out from the seller, but, um, they can, uh, do a very, uh, very wide range from, uh, freshwater to, um, pretty, pretty heavy, uh, salinity, concentrations in brackish water also. Um, people have kept these in uh, marine tanks and uh, brackish tanks. So um, I keep this one at just a little bit of salinity now uh, with these guys at adulthood. So um, I put about a cup and a half of aquarium salt. Uh, you know, since they are bottom dwellers for the most part, I don't fill this tank up all the way. So maybe that's, you know, 25 30 gallons of water minus the sand uh so um i put about a cup and a half of regular aquarium salt uh you can also use dosing of seachem brackish salt let's see if we can get a little more movement here out of this guy oh there he goes he flew there he is they're probably kind of annoyed that the light is on since I fed them not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, they kind of dart around like nuts if you prod them enough. But anyways, um, there's the other one back in the corner just barely covered with sand. Uh, so these guys eat uh, small crustaceans, inverts. Um, I feed frozen plankton. And uh, they, uh, they eat nocturnally, as I mentioned before. So um, with these guys, as you can see, you should use sand. Let's see if this one wants to 
do anything exciting for me. Well, he'll stick on the side of the wall. There you kind of can see how funky they look. And there's that right-handedness that uh, you see when you're looking uh, down from a bird's eye view uh, on the fish. The set of eyes is on the right side, which interestingly, in the larval stage of this fish, the eyes start on both sides of the head. And it's only when further in metamorphosis to adulthood they, um, they uh, migrate to... Uh, to uh, one side and leave the blind side, as they would say. So uh, there is a stone in here because these guys do prefer highly oxygenated water. Sand preferred, like I mentioned before, because they like to bury themselves, feel secure. And uh, also, uh, you know, if, if you do feed live food, um, they like to hunt in the sand also. Um, I don't really recommend these guys as a beginner species. Uh, basically, here's why. You got to keep their water conditions pretty, uh, pretty pristine. Well, you got to make sure the oxygen is right. Uh, if they are brought up in salinity, you got to make sure the salinity level's right. And also at juvenile stages um, and young adulthood, these guys can be very picky eaters. So um, it's not the most uh, beginner fish, I guess you would say. But um, my own experience here keeping these guys, this is a, a solely an experiment, no pun intended, soul flatfish. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, you can keep these guys in community tanks with uh, more mild-mannered fish. Uh, the sand is important to still keep as a substrate, but uh, no fish that will fit in these guys' mouths, though these hog chokers specifically do not get very large, maybe an average around four inches, three, four inches in an aquarium setting uh, with you know, the proper um, setup and environment. Um, a 40-gallon tank size, a breeder preferably, is probably the most uh, beneficial, you know, gives a nice footprint for them to bury themselves in, uh, in the substrate and the sand there. So, uh, here's that. Here. You can see the, sorry for the air, air pump noise is super loud. There we go. But they're usually on the ground and hanging out in the sand. Um, it's not very often I see them. Other ones down in the corner. But still very interesting. Uh, very interesting. Glad I got these guys because when the light's off, they will flutter around, and uh, they look like flappy little fun <laughs> little butterflies or something flying through the tank. It's kind of cool. Well, thanks, guys, for coming along on my uh, fun little journey. My uh, Some call them a freshwater flounder, though technically they're a brackish water flatfish more closely related to a sole, the hog choker. So uh, this was fun. I hope uh, this was interesting for you guys. Uh, something kind of unorthodox, I guess you might say. But uh, I've been having a lot of fun with them, and uh, I'd recommend them uh, for uh, the intermediate uh, to more advanced uh, level keeper. So thanks, you guys, for coming along. Again, Ruby with Unorthodox Aquatics, and you guys have a great night. Bye.